As many. But who recognizes Senator Fred Mitchell? Uh, thank you, um, Madam President. Um, the uh, government has spent uh, much time defending its record with a supplementary budget. And uh, it was interesting to see how the leader for the government was able to finesse where they are. Uh, but we didn't have to go far because all we had to do really was to go back to the statement made by the finance minister in the first budget communication that he gave, which explained fully why the country was in the fiscal position that it was in. It was simply the hurricane. The deficit was on a downward trend, and the only thing that blew it out of the water was the hurricane. Notwithstanding the propaganda of the campaign, those are the facts. So we're a little bit bemused on this side to hear this is now, the hurricane is now being pleaded as the reason why everything has been blown out of the water. Bemused, but not surprised. Uh, when the so-called fiscal responsibility bill was passed, we said it wasn't worth the papers written on. And we said, one hurricane will blow it out of the water. Four weeks didn't go by before the hurricane came and blew it out of the water. Was it five weeks? Was it six weeks? Because we still have to follow that law. And, and it's still in the agency. Uh, I, I understand. Which you all didn't have to do. Paper, paper will, you know, sit still for you to write anything on it. The fact is, de facto, de facto, it blew it out of the water within weeks. I'm within sure weeks. I'm sure you will. <laughs> it's like this, it's the same thing, uh, you know, you... The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away with, uh, with, with the, um, the so-called independent director of public prosecutions. Absolutely, he is. Yes. He is. Except he is. you put in the law that the Attorney General can give general and specific directions. If he gives it. I understand. I understand. Again. I understand. Paper. Paper. I haven't gone for two minutes. The Office of Attorney General was the first office of minister under the crown in recorded history. It has a special status. The Attorney General has always from inception been ultimately responsible for law and order in the realm whatever that realm is and though in the interests of enhancing the 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 the, the perception and reality of independence in prosecutorial decisions and we place that in our constitution the Attorney General still remains overall responsible for law and order in, and, and that's civil, criminal, whatever, within the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and every other country. But let me show you the difference. The difference between what we have now is that any direction that any Attorney General gives to the DPP must be gazetted and in writing and gazetted published so the whole world knows. Nobody knows what the Attorney General of one of our neighboring states is telling prosecutors, but is all causing all, everybody to resign. That's the difference. No one knows why all prosecutors are resigning in a neighboring state. But we know that if, if this Attorney General or any other Attorney General sought in any way to give a direction, the whole Bahamas will know because it has been right there in the law books in a gazette. Yes, yes. I, you know, I was here. I was here when the debate took place. I was here. I read the bill, and I stand by what I say. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. So you give on the one hand, and you say, 
independent director of public prosecutions, fine. But you can give general and specific directions. Okay, you put it in the Gazette and all the rest of that. But you know, as I said, paper can will sit still for it. you to write anything on it. I'm, I'm unreconstructed on that point. Okay. I would expect you to defend your position, but that's what it is. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. It's a pattern of the government to say, I'm doing this, great big show, but in fact, it has changed nothing. It It has changed nothing. And so the hurricane has now blown the forecast out of the water. And of course, not surprised, this is a hurricane zone. In five months, we're going to be right back in it. And the question is, is the country actually prepared for the hurricane season? We still fooling around with, did we do, did we fix up Abaco and Grand Bahama since the last hurricane? And the next hurricane season is upon us. And our citizens are perplexed, bewitched, bewildered, and bothered. Seven months after the hurricane. And it's interesting. Politicians, I guess all of us have this issue. We have to be able to not be so self-absorbed that you can't give an objective assessment as to where you are. Now you could, these were nice stories I heard today. I, you know, if I were in a PLP, I would be clapping for you. It sounded great. Mm. It reminds me, it reminds me of uh, uh, the government of uh, Zimbabwe. I mean, I read the finance minister's statement there. It was great. The country is on the way back and so on and so forth, except it's three hours to get gasoline from the gas station and the power is off for 18 hours in the day. But if you read the finance minister's statement, you wouldn't believe you're in the same country. And that's what we have here. Nice stories. You're doing a great job. Pat yourselves on the back. Wonderful. You've delivered all this. You've done great since the hurricane. But there are some realities on the ground which do not add up to that. Do not add up to that. And one of the things I pointed out is passing laws don't solve problems. Writing edicts don't solve problems. The most uh, obvious, obvious example is uh, last year, I think around October, we passed this law which was to, supposed to stop the public corporations from churning up the road. <laughs> a $10,000 fine. I warned you. I warned you then. I said, this ain't going to do nothing. It ain't going to do nothing. Not, not a single thing. You can pass whatever law you want, right? Not one single thing has changed. The road is still tr- churned up. <laughs> Dig up the road. <laughs> I want to see, you know, I want, I want to stop them one day and say, hey, do you have permission to dig this road up? Did you get permission from the Minister of Works to dig up the road? <laughs> yeah, they did. They did, I see. Good for them. No $10,000 fine for them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so <laughs> passing laws don't do anything, you know. Um, so, so, anyway, uh, we are where we are. But the reason I mentioned that was because <clears throat> we constantly say when we pass these laws, I think there was one last week we passed a law saying that we are collapsing all of the tax appeal tribunals and, and making them one. Yeah. And this is supposed to make life easier for Bahamians. Now, the experience is that every time we say we're making life easier for Bahamians, we actually end up making it harder. And uh, I was, I was, uh, no, you can pass laws, but you know, I, I, it, it is something, it's, it, no, it is something which I have been struggling with since being involved in public policy for a long time. Why is this? That it actually never makes things easier, but more difficult. I mean, the one is, you know, what, what you got to go apply down in Gladstone Road for something, and then you got to come up here to town for something else. Then you got to go back down to Gladstone Road for it, and then you got to go up on the third floor of some other building, right? You're fixing it, eh? Okay, yeah. yeah let's pass a law to fix that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Let's hope the internet works though, because that's the next. I'm coming to the phone company. 
<laughs> the phone company. This works, bogus phone we're company where we're nothing we're works. Pay, nothing pay. works. Dro drop phone drop phone calls. You can't, can you hear me now? Remember that ad they used to have, have on? In the middle of your conversation, it goes dead. You know, and then, and then, then when, if you try to use the voice over IP, you know, you hear beep, beep, reconnect, beep, beep, reconnect. You can't have a, a decent conversation for anything. And digitization, think that gonna work? Yeah. Well, good, good luck on you. I'm glad, I'm glad to say, and, and this, is, this is the reason why, no, it's fine. This it's it's the reason you know. Um, this the reason the reason the reason the reason, the reason we are uh, having this discussion. You see, uh, the, the the former minister and now senator inspired the minister to actually tell us what was going on. Otherwise, we'd be living with an absence of knowledge. We would have been living with an absence of knowledge. We, 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 we are now better informed as a result of a debate in this place. We are now, we are now, we are now better informed. I was offering to help the government out. I was offering to help the government out. I was offering to help the government out. So what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. Customs. <clears throat> you, last week I mentioned this, you were absent, Mr. Leo, that yeah, sure. All right. Last, last, last week, I mentioned the fact that Freeport, or sorry, Grand Bahama and Abaco are supposed to be VAT-free zones. No, I agree. Except the announcement went out that Grand Bahama and Abaco were VAT-free zones. And I said, it turns out, yes, it turns out that it's not a VAT-free zone, that some things right. are VAT-free. Some yeah. things are VAT-free. And it has caused confusion. Yeah, if you just look at the order, uh, if yeah, I let, let's see what you're going to do. Let's see what you're going to do. I, I, I'll read you the order. Senator Buffen. Um, thank you. Um, well, I've checked my email. It's in my email. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, the. Okay. That zero rating on supply of construction services. For well, the period commencing on the first day of December 2019 and ending on the 30th of June 2020, the supply of construction services shall be zero rated under the VAT Act 2014. And so um, that is uh, an order that is... That's amending the existing order. Yes, and this is going to be promulgated um, tomorrow uh, pursuant to a cabinet conclusion under Section 31 uh, of the Interpretation General Clauses Act. It need only be signed by the minister and gazetted and tabled at the earliest opportunity in the House. Good, good. And so it will come into effect tomorrow. Good. Are we glad we have this debate? Are we glad we have this debate? We're now better informed, except <laughs> that it isn't a VAT-free zone. So it, certain things are VAT-free. When you announce that something is VAT-free, that means the tax disappears for those two islands for the specific period. That's what it should mean when you say VAT free. Yes. And the thing is, all this business of zero rating makes the tax more complicated. The businessmen are saying it is making it more expensive for them to operate. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, every, exactly. every, you, yes, right, right. Right, exactly, 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 exactly. Well, so you say. But if you say something is VAT free, it's supposed to be VAT free. Now, so customers. No, no. The, the, the consultants that, that, that advised the last government said keep the tax simple, yeah. not complicated. So it's either VAT or no VAT. That's why it's zero, either VAT, zero rating, no. zero rating causes a problem for business people. And they're, I'm, no, they don't, you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to listen to me. I'm just telling you what the business community is saying. You don't have to listen. You don't have to listen. You could ignore it. You know, it's your seat. So, you know, you could ignore it. Customs, you know, is, I said last week, disagrees with the VAT office about what applies to what. I'm advised yesterday, day before, they called a meeting with business people who are in the business of calling themselves couriers and told them they can no longer use the uh, harbor anymore to bring their goods in. So all, there, there's no airport. Well, the minister says there's an airport. So now everybody has to stop using the harbor 
for their courier business and everybody is directed toward the airport, except the airport isn't functioning as a proper airport. And so the cur people in the courier business are now screaming to the rafters. Some of them have 30 or more people working for them and saying, this is going to close down our business. I told them, go see your lawyer. Harvey Times is a good one. Go see your lawyer. Maybe that's the way to deal with it. Maybe they need to speak to the minister. And maybe he can intervene to do something about it. But as I said, you don't have to listen to me. I mean, they're your seats, they're your people. Sports facilities. I love the waxing eloquent to say congratulations to the Stingers and congratulations, wonderful. This school, <coughs> this school, Sunland, has done really well. The coach, uh, Marco Cooper, is an excellent leader. And it's a wonderful thing to come to town, to Nassau, and have the victory that they did. I happened to meet them uh, with the leader of the opposition. We were both watching the national game between Mexico and the Bahamas on Sunday, and they were there. And then the next day, they won the Hugh Campbell tournament. But one of the things I wanted to say is that <clears throat> several times during the past three months, I would say, if not the past year, the sports community has been appealing both publicly and to us as, an, as a, as a non-governmental organization and political party that the facilities that they needed, the support that they needed, was simply not there. At one point, they, were, they weren't actually sure that the nationals for basketball would come off. I'm told that sufficient pressure has been put that that is now resolved. But the call is, is there's another uh, function which is supposed to be coming up in Grand Bahama. The question is, is there, it, that's resolved too. All right, the power, well, I understand you. I am going, well, we are asking the question now. We are asking the question now. The Grand Bahama Sporting Complex, will it be ready for this, for, for this, right? Will it be ready if you wish? Sure, go right ahead. Uh, we want to hear. You want to hear what's going on. Thank you very much, Madam President. You're very welcome to the opportunity. Before I answer, you know, one, 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 this is not some good information. I didn't say it was. So, Madam President, I'm going to get back on the process. necessary to ensure that they have the island sports for next week. So we're going to ensure that all of them are required for Because they have, again, the sports complex was probably under 10 feet of water. It was completely gutted out. So we are doing what we can to ensure that those persons get what is required in order for the island sports to be done. Schools for the last few weeks, have been having their um, sporting, sort of sporting uh, uh, activities and so on uh, at the sporting complex. But there's some big things that they require in order to have the island sports. We talk to them. We can ensure that by next week those things are going to be in place. That's what we do. And the chair is where they are challenges. challenges. We will do with them. In fact, that's again, funding for that is in this very same uh, debate that we have in there now. So those things are being taken care of. And uh, Madam President, with your leave, and the gym. The gym is going to be ready up and going for the nationals to take place for the gym to do that. Of course, as well. I'm not aware the nationals are taking place in my, 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 I, I'm advised. The nationals for basketball for senior high schools take place every year in Grand Bahama. Yeah, up until care. recently, there was a question about whether these nationals would actually take place because the, the funding was supposedly not available. And the reason, the reason, the reason I mentioned this is because these things, if, if you are talking about, I hear talk about the youth, the youth, the youth. The nationals are important because the international coaches come here and watch the kids play. And it is through those opportunities that they get a chance 
to get the scholarships to go overseas. So it's critically important that this happens. And so we are bound to raise an issue any time we hear that something of this nature is in peril. So I'm happy to hear that you will keep your eyes on that. Uh, as, as, as you've said with the Grand Bahama Sporting Complex, so that these nationals can, can take place. Now, the <coughs> credit for the roads in North Andros. Um, you know, there is a thing that says, I think it was the former prime minister who actually said this to uh, Mr. Christie when he opened the hospital. Yeah, yeah, some sow and some reap. So I understand how, you know, when you ain't got nothing else, you have to say, it's me, it's me, it's me. But look, Bamsey, the roads in North Andrews are all the progressive liberal party. At least give us some credit. I mean, you know, come on. That's why those roads are there. And, and you all, you all, you all, you all, I understand, you all, you all fought tooth and nail. You all tried to turn Bamsey into a burnt out building. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You tried to turn it out into a burnt out building. No, you tried to turn Bamsey into a burnt out building. No, there's no inaction. There was no inaction. One at a time, no please. It was a great success story. A great success story. A great success story. And now you can say, thank God for the roads. But I want, since you're there, you know, the man is there, the hot mix plant is there, everything is there. Put the road into red base, please. Put the road into red base. The road isn't going to be paved. There ain't no money for it. Put the roads. You can, you can see that's something you could actually take credit for. Say we did the roads in the red bays. Why don't you say that? The young people are saying when they go into work. I'm, I'm told that the government employed a hundred, a hundred new people have been brought on to Bamsi. This project that had been turned it. A hundred new people, but a lot of them live in red bays and they got to travel over the road, breaking up, breaking up their cars. Fix the road. Fix the road. Fix the road, fix the road. As for the bridge, now the bridge is controversial, even though, you know, Andrus needs bridges, no problem. Bridges needs, you know, but, but you know, the question is asked me, the bridge to Fresh Creek, that's the bridge that needs to be fixed. If, if, when you can do it, when you can do it. Are you discriminating against PLPs uh, because they're PLPs? Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Is that what you're doing? Point of order. Fix the bridge. Point of order. Fix the bridge. Point of order. Fix the bridge. Fix the bridge. Point of order. Thank you. Chair recognizes um, yeah, Senator um, Bethel. Uh, we, uh, I first of all must take take issue with any suggestion that um, the government is victimizing PLPs. I affirmably deny that. Um, Senator has, Bethel is on the floor, Cabinet please. has recently approved. The first point about it is this: we are aware of the um, deleterious condition of the um, bridge in Fresh Creek and the consequences of it that. Um, it is unsafe. Um, the fire truck couldn't make it across from Lawtech and all that sort of stuff. So we know that it is in critical need. Um, the, gov the cabinet has a re uh, approved a contract uh, for the technical consultants to um, review the state of the bridge and to make recommendations as to how it will be, it can be um, properly restored to its former state. Um, and so, in short order, um, we will get the technical report. And shortly thereafter, the funds and uh, the, the contracts will be scoped out and put out into the market to fix the bridge. Thank you. Great. All right. Aren't we glad we have this debate? We're really glad we have this. Debate. We're a better informed society today as a result of this debate. Other question I raised last week, land assessments. The way, you, uh, there's a way you can raise taxes here. Yeah. I heard you say you're not raising taxes. The Minister of Finance is not raising taxes. Not raising taxes. But they sent the assessors into the far country and they're going house to house. And magically people's <coughs> values, land values are going up. So what does that do to the land tax? <laughs> raises, raises taxes. Raises taxes. Raises taxes. And what I'm understanding is that 
them. Yeah, but what I'm understanding is that, you know, you have this firm that's been brought in from the outside and they're using Google Maps and Google Maps is outdated and so you're having a lot of complaints about it. Again, you don't have to listen to me. I'm just telling you what's in the marketplace. You know, life in a bubble is sweet. I understand that. You know, great, great, great. But just listen to me. Yeah. No, no, I, I don't never lived in a bubble. No, I, I, I just understand what it's like. So I just tell you, I just tell you, you know, land assessments are going up. The people are complaining. People are complaining. Uh, local government. The local government elections are coming up <clears throat> in October, or in May of this year, sorry. And um, administrators are now being trained. But complaints that some districts have maybe a clock running the district and he doesn't have the signing authority on the checks and so the administrator who's been moved uh, moved moved to the uh, to other places in the country and the checks now have to be sent to that person to be signed so this is creating quite an awkward position in the department of local government i invite you to bring some order to that situation. Mr. Attorney General, make sure that they follow the law. Follow the law. <laughs> the local government act. The local government act. And meanwhile, stop giving out stop giving out taxi plates in Exuma to people without going through the local committee. <laughs> you know, stop doing it. Stop doing it. You know? Let it go through the if you believe in local government, let them do it. Don't jump over them and start giving them out. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah. <laughs> yes, right. I understand. I understand. Um, I would also, though, like to use this opportunity, use this opportunity to promote and to say thank you to the Church of God, Grand Bahama, brass band who is under the direction of Reverend Gilbert Barry Bishop Barry Morris and between the 23rd of November and the 30th of November last year the band of its own volition took I believe 35 members to Houston Texas and they spent those days there and uh, together were viewed by about 11 million people in that particular basin. Uh, they were exposed on television. Um, I'm sure the Bahamian community who got the opportunity to see them there were really pleased and chuffed at their performance. Uh, they did a good job for the country. And so I want to, and, and did so of their own volition and on their own. And I wanted to give this opportunity to thank him for having organized that, for having done such a good job in promoting not only the band, but the Bahamas by reason of that. And I think uh, he said that uh, in doing so, it gave a great lift because after Hurricane Dorian, many people were quite depressed and down, and this was a way of raising spirits. I had the opportunity because I spend um, New Year's in Freeport every year and uh, I've now got an addition to my activity because at two o'clock in the morning the Church of God band in Eight Mile Rock marches from their church uh, up to, I think it's up to the shopping center uh, in Eight Mile Rock. Great experience. Um, you know, you have scores of people on the streets and people on the side at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, you know, I'm normally asleep by 9, but uh, uh, <clears throat> because I'm in, yes, uh, I'm, I was, well, you got to go to Ascension for Midnight Mass, uh, which is where I spend it. But I just wanted to say congratulations to the band and to say how uh, all of us on this side will support the government in its efforts, and we urge them to support the investment in culture and in sports. These are two areas which are important to our young people. And if you want to see people to really get a Philip as a young person interested in something that this is, this is a, a, you could not have a fine investment. Music, for one, the arts generally, but, uh, but sports as well. And, um, 
I've come to appreciate the skill which uh, coaches have, uh, and I've been able to apply. They, they said this that, that you know sports you can apply to lessons in life, but I mean one of the things you you know about, for example, basketball in particular, is that you know you have no time to celebrate victory or loss because the next game comes. And this is something which we, from the Progressive Liberal Party side, understood. You lose on Boxing Day. New Year's Day is seven days later, so you just go back in the shack, get to work, and conquer the dragon. So, as I said, you don't have to listen to me. I've told you what's actually going on in the country. Uh, and uh, I hope, oh yes, uh, labor. I did mention last week the situation oh, sorry. <clears throat> in the tax office where there is a tension between the contract workers and those who are permanent and pensionable. And I urged, I left it with the representative for labor here, and I urged the minister to have a look to see that yeah. that no, I understand, but you know she has a, she has a broader remit. She is now a senator of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, not the representative for UTEP. Right, and so I hope that she and the minister will work on that issue, which I raised last week. I think uh, I'm still looking around for someone to buy this phone company, but uh, no, I'm talking about. The dominant player in the market. The dominant player in the market. I was shocked to find by their stats that they still have 70% of the mobile market. I can't understand it. You know, today, today, and I'm sorry to bring this personal matter up, but I will anyway. Um, today, after not being able to hear on my landline for a year, because the thing is crackling, yeah. So I stopped paying the bill. I stopped paying the bill. So they disconnected the phone. And then they send me something in, a, in an email saying that I must pay them $111 and they'll turn on the phone and then they'll, and then they'll deal with the crackling on the line. <laughs> so, you know, I wanted to tell them some choice words <laughs> about you and their line, you know. <laughs> I mean, talk of fool. <laughs> I have, the reason I stopped paying the bills is because they couldn't hear nothing on the phone. <laughs> They disconnect, disconnect the phone. Now they tell me I spray out. They can fix it until, until I pay the bill. Yeah, I hope they get that hundred eleven dollars. You know, it would be like the minister would always have to break my hand here to say withdraw. Anyhow, thank you very much. Um, I think I've said my say. Um, <clears throat> the supplementary budget, of course, goes through. We made the observations we had, and uh, life in the bubble is sweet. Enjoy it while you can. Thank you. Thank you, Sam.